هالبرنامج عم بيتقدم لكم برعايه اندريوس ميديا اهلا وسهلا فيكم مجددا مشاهدينا بصرنا اليوم نستضيف على برنامج امنيات ياسمينا رمزي من ارابيسك دانس جروب اوركسترا ياسمينه ويلكم باك تو ذا شو هاو هاف يو بين بيرسونالي اي بين فاين ثانك يو نايس تو بي باك Yasmina, it's been um, a year almost, no, actually, I, I correct myself, about six months since Noor. Mm. Uh, tell us how, what Arabesque has been up to in the last couple of years, bringing us to today's topic. Today. Well, um, in 1996, we did our first big production in a theater, and we've done eight productions since. And the last one that you saw six months ago was Noor, was our most recent. And uh, so since then, we've been working on the new production, which uh, is in February of 2012, which will be called Jamra. But uh, in a couple of weeks, or on September 29th, we're having a very special event called The Best of Arabesque. And we're celebrating our 15-year anniversary of the company and my 30-year anniversary of my career in Middle Eastern dance and uh, in the 25th year anniversary of the school. So it's kind of a, a special year. A lot year. of milestones yes. to celebrate. Yes. Um, Yasmina, do you, do you, would you have chosen another career now looking <laughs> back so many years or would you have chosen to do this? I so did not think I was going to be doing this. <laughs> Even the first day, I remember I was supposed to do a party and somebody said, we're all going to dress up. You be the belly dancer. And I was like, over my dead body. <laughs> I didn't really even know what it was. And look at this 30 years later. I've got a company and there's 35 people dedicated to it, musicians and dancers. And I've toured in 60 cities in the world now. And uh, yeah, I never would have thought this would have happened. <laughs> Can you tell our viewers uh, today about the special celebration of a milestone? What are you doing? When are you doing it? Well, it's at Fleck Dance Theatre at the Harbour Front, which is where we have most of our productions. And we've chosen a few highlights of our repertoires. We're not doing any of our long choreographies that are half an hour long, because we want to show a, a different variations. Um, so we're doing, you know, a, I'm trying to show the different styles that we've done over the years. And um, it'll be a live orchestra, about 17 dancers, I think 10 musicians. And Fatih al Jarrah, who was in uh, Noor, will come up from San Francisco again, so he'll be part of the orchestra again. And, um, but there's also celebration beforehand. There's an hour before the show where we have wine and food being served to everybody, sort of a party. Um, there's a silent auction, so it's also a fundraiser as well for the company. Mm -hmm. And um, we have prizes for people. Uh, after the performance, uh, there'll be a talk back. So all the dancers, all the musicians, costume makers, backstage people, everybody will come on the stage and we'll turn the house lights on the audience and we'll speak with the audience and, and the audience can ask questions of anybody in the company. Tell us about the idea of the fundraiser for Arabesque. We've experienced in the past rich shows that you've put together. And I don't think a lot of people know about the amount of work and volunteer work specifically that goes into this. Mm -hmm. So what brought us to this stage today? Well, in the past, we haven't really done any real fundraising. Mm -hmm. We are uh, sponsored by the Ontario Arts Council, uh, Toronto Arts Council, and sometimes by Canada Council. So we get some funding there, but I don't think anybody realizes it's a drop in the bucket of how much money it costs to put on a production like that. And um, nobody really gets paid, and if they do, certainly not what they're worth. Because so really, it takes an hour, not an hour, sorry, a year to put on a production like that. Um, even now, it's September. For next February, we we're already rehearsing three, four times a week, several hours. And, um, and that will go straight into February. Mm -hmm. So it's a lot of work, and there's costumes. Some are imported from Egypt, some are made here. In one production in... Um, the one we did into Omri in Asala, there was 140 costumes in that one production. So you can imagine the costume. See, cost the audience involved. only gets to enjoy what they see. They yeah, for an hour and a half, they and they're right. gone. <laughs> they don't sometimes think about what went behind it and, and what's yes. the cost. Well, yeah. all the best. And, and when would this uh, fundraiser take place? It's taking place September 29th. It starts at 7 o'clock. And you can get tickets at the Harbour Front website. We also sell tickets at Arabesque as well. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yasmina, what would the dancers and musicians in your mind, um, wh what would drive them to dedicate their time to work with Arabesque? Sometimes, I, d I don't really know, but I think, I guess it's the same thing that drives me. It's, um, it's that moment when the show is finished 
and we realize we've affected all those people in the audience. Sometimes they cry, sometimes they laugh, and often we get a standing ovation. We know we've moved them emotionally. Mm -hmm. That was worth the whole year's work. Well, you know what? <laughs> um, let's watch together what one of your long-term standing members of Arabesque has to say about Arabesque. Okay. Uh, my name is Sliman Warwar. I've been uh, performing with Arabesque for seven years and uh, I'm the lead percussionist in the company. I do compositions for drum solos and uh, a lot of uh, other uh, musical uh, inputs, but mainly is the percussion and been performing with the company for all over the world since uh, 2006. Working with Yasmina, uh, it's, it's qu quite pleasuring and challenging at the same time. Um, she's a very unique artist uh, in her vision and what she do. And she always pushes the limit and pushes the envelope out. And then, you know, you expect everybody around her to keep up with it, which is makes all of us, you know, try to push harder and harder. Um, she's extremely talented in what she does, that she took uh, a solo form of dance and turned it into a group dance which is not easy at all and also making it more also theatrical plus adding live music to it that was the biggest challenge that she always believed in in the unity between music and dance being live on stage rather than just a recorded music and her belief in that basically forced all of us to work hard and created what is called right now Arabesque Orchestra that we are the members of it around six and we every show or other show we collaborate with other musicians that last show we had 12 musicians on stage uh, led by uh, Professor Bassam Bishara so working with her is nothing I would say usual or ordinary it's very unique that's as simple as I could explain it the story that I always remember is my first day that I walked to Arabesque. Uh, at that time, I did not know that this thing or this company existed. Um, I got a phone call from some lady called Yasmina Ramsey. She asked me if I could come down, went to Arabesque, and I had no idea what to expect at all. And when I walked in, it was this blonde Canadian woman, and she talks really fast and she was going on and on about you know how beautiful and she's very passionate about what she do and she's very passionate about the arabic culture and the music and i really did not understand what is she all about all was in my mind i'm like okay so you're a belly dance company so what's the big deal you know and she gave me cds there was a show we're supposed to do the next week which we did and that was the first time i realized what is arabesque and it was the first time for me to step a foot on an actual theater and to see the dedication of the dancers that you know forced me to understand um, that i'm not dealing with a normal belly dancer or belly dance school rather than a dance company that is taking the arabic music and art to a different level and from that point on you know, I always keep reminding her, I'm like, you were the blonde woman that talks too fast. I almost walked out because you gave me a headache. But then luckily I stayed and, you know, I've been with, the, with them for the past uh, seven years. Yasmina, what are your comments about what we just watched? What Suleiman said? You know, um, I'm the artistic director of the company and I create the choreography. And P Professor Bassam Bashara, he is the musical director. He directs the orchestra and he composes a lot of the music that we play as well. But Suleiman, he's the percussion director. He also composes the, most of the drum solos. But really, he's the secret director behind the whole thing. If it wasn't for him, nothing would ever happen. He gets the musicians there on time, which is a huge challenge in and of itself. And um, What's he the total number of people we're tra he's trying to coordinate? Well, like he said, sometimes 12 musicians. Mm -hmm. And these are musicians who initially don't know what the meaning of rehearsal or practice or being on time is. <laughs> you know, <laughs> I take care of the dancers mostly, but I also freak out about them sometimes because there's too many of them and they all have issues, etc. So he keeps me 
on the straight and narrow. And also Bassam and I, when we get together, we get very creative ideas. And Bassam's like, oh, we'll bring in a sitar here. And I'm like, yeah, we'll have lights coming from here. And Suleiman's like, uh, this is not very realistic. <laughs> you know, so he brings us down to the earth. Sound of reason. Yes, he brings us down to earth. And, uh, and he's really the one, the, the director behind the whole thing that, that brings it all together. Some, you know, sometimes they say leaders kind of um, share with their own dedication, it's contagious mm -hmm. for the entire team. So hopefully at some point everybody will be there without much direction and well, be there on time. Well, you know, in the last two productions, it's happened like that. We're, we're just amazed. Either musicians are on time, or everybody knows their stuff ahead of time. Didn't happen before. But I think everybody understands now, you know, what a special thing that we have. And everybody really works towards it. I don't have to coax anybody anymore. Really yes, nice. you know, what keeps you going? You've been at this for how many years now, you said? 30. And, <laughs> and you didn't even think that that would be a career yeah. um, that you would have chosen. But what keeps you um, challenged and interested? I love to create choreography. I'm usually, I wake up in the middle of the night all the time at four o'clock in the morning and I have to get and write it down. I don't know, as soon as I hear a piece of music, I see the choreography in front of me. So I'm driven by that. I, I want to put what I see in my imagination on stage. Um, but also in the beginning, you know, I, I just, I got on stage in the first place just because I was shy and wanted to get over shyness. I thought, I'll do it once. <laughs> That's it. And then I got a chance to go to the Middle East because I was hired there. And I thought, oh, free trip to the Middle East. That's great. I always wanted to go to Egypt. And then one thing was mm -hmm. to another. And before I know it, you know, here we are. And uh, the live music, I almost uh, gave up that idea after it was a lot of trouble. And... Um, uh, but every time I'm about to give up on something, somehow some angel comes or something happens and it puts it all together and then I just keep going. Well, I could yeah. attest to the last uh, uh, I've seen at Noor and, and it was awesome to watch from Thank the you. sounds to the colors to the dancers, the music. It, it was really beautiful. What's next uh, for you other than February's um, annual? Um, all of us, all 35 of us who are involved in Arabesque, we all dream of the day that we will become an international company that tours around the world. Myself and with Suleiman most of the time have toured to 60, uh, city, 60 cities around the world and taught and performed. But in order to take the whole orchestra and all the dancers on the road is a big cost and we really need a producer to take us to that level to be able to do that. But that's really our goals. We want to take our art to the whole world. We've done a few shows in the States, a few across Canada, but, um, uh, but to be able to really take the whole thing properly and stage it properly in, in a good theaters around the world is our, is our goal. Well, best of luck. Thanks. I'd ask you once again, Yasmina, to tell us about your fundraising event, the date, and what people can expect. And um... uh, It's uh, September 29th. It's a Thursday night at the Harbor Front at Fleck Dance Theater. It starts at 7 p.m. and there's an hour of uh, wine and food and partying. And then, uh, and also a silent auction, some prizes to be given away, um, fun things. And then the show begins at 8 o'clock and it'll end about 9.15, 9.30. And then we have a talk back. So all the musicians, all the dancers will come on stage and the audience can ask questions of anybody and we have a kind of a conversation between the audience and the performers. Excellent. Then, uh, Yasmina, we'll see you on the 29th. All okay. the best to you yes. and uh, to Arabesque. Thank you. Thank you for coming on the show. مشاهدينا بنتوقف لحظة قصيرة مع الإعلان ومنكمل معكم برنامجنا. هالبرنامج عم بيتقدم لكم برعاية أندريوس ميديا.